man, when they gonna learn, when they gonna learn. All right, so let me tell you something about Black Panther, man. We know he's a warrior. We know he's a king. But I just don't think that's sunken in for some people because they keep trying them. And you got to give them the credit because over the years, Black Panther has always known when to either crank it up or when to tone it down as far as dealing with an opponent. And he doesn't waste any resources either because if you're a trained fighter and you know how to handle yourself, he'll come at you accordingly. And he's one of the few heroes you can say that about that will engage in somebody in combat and still have the utmost respect for them. But that's only from a fighting standpoint. As far as everything else goes, I don't care. But yeah, if you messing with his family or Wakanda at all, he probably will rip your throat out. But Hawkeye should really know, aside from that one exception, Black Panther does care. So now in this instance, full disclaimers, House of M. And Magneto got Genosha popping. It's a place where mutants can be free, be proud. You can just fly through the air. You don't need proof of insurance or any of that. But inside Magneto's palace, him and Quicksilver are having a conversation. And Magneto's pretty frustrated. He's been trying to get Quicksilver to marry Storm because she's the only other ruler that is a mutant. And Pietro been trying, man. He been trying hard. Because aside from being the queen of Kenya, Storm is viewed as a goddess. And I can't argue that. And her having the ability to control the weather is like the perfect ability to describe her personality. Because nature can be beautiful or it can be super destructive. And Storm is those exact two wrapped up into one. So while she's talking on the Allison show, which is probably Ellen, you know how they flip it around sometimes. Magneto gets pissed because he's frustrated that Storm does not see things the way that he does with extreme prejudice. And he's really trying to do everything he can to bring Storm into his side so he can model the country of Kenya after his belief. And Pietro tells his father, look, there's just one person standing in the way, the only person she's giving play to, and that's Black Panther. So he tells Magneto, what we need to do is get rid of him and then we're going to have a chance. Haters gonna hate, man. But let's skip over to Wakanda. And T'Challa's have a conversation with Storm about the interview she just had on television. And the way he's talking to her, she's telling him, like, look, you're not my husband. And he understands that. And he lets her know that even if they were married, he probably still couldn't stop her. But he's really just trying to talk to her and let her know that a war is coming with Magneto. And there's no getting around it. And if you're probably wondering why they're not married in this scenario, it's more so the trust issue on Storm's end. And it's a mistake that's very commonplace. Because, like, when a woman sees a man who's around a whole lot of other females, a lot of assumptions can be made. Or a lot of assumptions are made. But it's funny though because before she gets off the phone, he's like, hey, you know when you're up in them clouds, you ain't got no clothes on, you be thinking about me. But I love the way that Reginald Hudlin writes the dialogue between these two. It's organic and it's real and you can feel them coming together. But as the child is getting off the phone with Storm, Saber to the teleported into the room. And remember everything I said about the respectable fighter and the fighting styles with Black Panther? Like, I wasn't playing at all. Like, he will meet you on the level that you're trying to take it to. Like, as soon as you try to take it up another notch, he's already sitting on that level, just chilling. And whatever plans you had at that point, you can just forget it. And Saber is just laying out bleeding like, why would you shoot me like that? And he's like, uh, because I'm a pretty damn good shot. And like I mentioned earlier too, you notice here with Saber dropped the gun, he dropped the gun. So not only will he crank it up with you, but he'll also de-escalate with you and still beat you. And Sabretooth made the mistake of telling him that he was coming for his head. So Sabretooth's like, give me a second, I'm gonna heal up, we're gonna go back at it. But Black Panther ain't hearing that, man. So he took it to the next place that Sabretooth was talking about taking it. And then he handled it old school gangster style. By sending the head back to Genosha, straight to Magneto. And he did it by using the same transporter they used to send Sabretooth into the palace as well. And this is the kind of statement you get from a king as well, too. Because as far as kings go, T'Challa's toned down a lot. He really doesn't take it there unless it's no other option. So like in Sabretooth's case, you can't just go in wanting to take his head and then expect to walk out with yours. And for those of you who are wondering why Magneto doesn't just go in, lift up the whole rock of vibranium and just drop it on Black Panther's head, and it's simply because Magneto cannot manipulate vibranium. And in other storylines when they had a matchup before, Magneto would just magnetize everything in the room and wrap it around T'Challa. But still, he was able to punch through that and put them claws on him. And he's even tried to reach in and use the iron in his blood to rip him apart. But because of the vibranium weaving, he's not able to get through. And without a lot of access to metal objects for options, say that 10 times fast. But it really doesn't give Magneto a lot of options or really a fighting chance invading Wakanda and taking Black Panther head on. So what he does is go for a bigger gun who's also in Africa, and that's Apocalypse. And he gasses him up, man. Like, he talks to him about expanding and tells him, hey, man, just go down there and take over Wakanda. I mean, man, it's just Wakanda, man. Like, well, how hard could it be? Because the way Magneto wants this to play out, he wants Apocalypse to take over so he can overthrow him and then take Wakanda for his own. And Apocalypse is pretty aware of it, but he still goes for it anyway. But just to let you guys know that for some time now, Black Panther's been having these discussions with the Council of Kings, which is very similar to your Illuminati. And this group includes him, Black Bolt, Doom, Storm, Emperor Sunfire, and King Namor. And although we know ultimately T'Challa could care less about just being a part of another group, but he will make the alliances that he needs to make in order to protect his people. And this is one prime example of that, because one-on-one -on -one Black Panther versus Apocalypse probably wouldn't go well for your boy. 
but he's smart enough to set provision and have a plan in place for anybody that comes to his doorstep. Because as Apocalypse is flying in, Storm takes him out of the skies because the skies are hers. He lands in the water, Namor meets him there. And when he gets to the land, so on and so forth. And it's funny how like out of this whole plan, Namor is the only person whose safety T'Challa's not really worried about. Because Storm is up far in the sky where she's safe, while Namor's down in the water catching these hands. And as for the next line of defense, the soldiers at the door, T'Challa ordered them to fall back. Because they're supposed to just shoot at him, light him up a bit, and then get out of there. But nonetheless, it's safety first for everybody but Namor when it comes to Black Panther. We could probably fill a whole nother video on each fight they've had in different universes. And it's funny, man, because I would love to see this in live action. Like, as Apocalypse was going through looking for T'Challa, this women fighting over him within the palace. And this is probably what Storm was talking about earlier, too. And I guess it makes sense. You can't be on Skype with your girl and in the background have girls fighting over you at the same time talking about, oh, baby, I'm just thinking of you. But when Apocalypse finds him, he's sitting on the throne. He ain't hiding from nobody. But he also ain't trying to fight with Apocalypse because he mad strong. So he just dips out on him. But look at the way he just struts through that door, though. And of course, Apocalypse is going to follow right behind him. But the look on his face when he see who's waiting behind that door, man, is priceless. And Black Panther's like, yeah, you thought you was going to come in here and take it, didn't you? But the reality is, if Magneto want to go and get goons, man, you got goons, I got goons. We can handle this. And with just a whisper from Black Bolt, Apocalypse is blown out of sight, along with that whole side of the palace as well, too. Yeah, everything gone. And just so you guys know, like the whole time that this happened, T'Challa had hit in a vibranium box. And he's inside of a vibranium box with a vibranium suit on, which dampened the sound tremendously, but still give you a good idea of how loud Black Bolt can get. But this even goes to show you that as a great leader, you got to set up great alliances because you can't always do it by yourself. But even though Black Bolt helped here, I know T'Challa's like, hey man, you did good, but you know, if you act up on me, I'm going to have to put that panther sword on your ass. Because if there's any one thing that can go up against Black Bolt's voice, it would have to be vibranium. It'd probably be a whole lot of it, but it'd be vibranium. But when word gets back to Magneto that Apocalypse couldn't take over Wakanda, and he don't even want to look at Quicksilver at this point. He's like, I know what you're about to say, and I don't even want to hear a word. But as for Storm, she's not the type of character who's going to hook up or link up with anybody because she notices the responsibility that she holds and the responsibility of ruling a country to where she's not just going to unite herself with anybody, especially if it doesn't align with her ideals. So hopefully Quicksilver won't take it too personal. Because anytime you're dealing with a woman who's worth it, there's just some things you just got to put up with, you just got to deal with. Especially if she's strong-willed and independent. So if you try to call her up and she either don't answer or she send you straight to voicemail, don't trip. And you ain't got to blow her phone up either. She'll see the missed call. Just carry on handling your business and wear a mask to cover your whole face so people can't see when you're crying. But that'll do it for this one, guys. I want to give a shout out to our latest Patreon as well. And that's Dario Davis. Huge thanks for your contribution. What you guys helped me do at Patreon really helps me keep the wheels moving here. And for anybody else who wants to chip in and help Dope Spill to keep spilling, I'll put all the links up for you. But over there, you'll be able to see where all the rewards start in different tiers. But also hit me up in the comments. Share with me your thoughts on the video. I usually hang around in the comments for like the first hour after a video post. So be sure to also click on the bell next to the subscribe button so we can chop it up a little bit. And when you have it turned on, you'll see the two marks next to it like the bell's ringing. So smash that like button. And before you go, feel free to check out the new pages i got a game page that's like all ultra wide because that's pretty much what i play in for the most part and it's going to be a whole bunch of gta gun running going on over there just dropped about 20 million on bunkers vehicles and all that so if that's your thing click here to check it out everybody else i'll catch you on the next one all right later